So we're going to be looking at the scientific foundations of strength training and how the muscles work. We're going to be keeping it simple because there is a lot we could dive into, but let's keep it let's keep it in layman's terms. Let's just get into it so you understand basically how muscles contract, how they gain strength, and how they get bigger. So we're going to start here by looking at basically a photo of the muscle belly. And as you can see, it breaks down into smaller parts, into smaller parts, and smaller parts. So basically, the main stuff that we're going to be talking about and getting into is really what's happening at the single muscle fiber area as it breaks down into the sarcolemma, the sarcoplasm, and the myofibril. A lot's going on, but those are the fine areas that we're going to be talking about. This is the muscle belly, and in these components, this is the nitty-gritty of where muscle contraction occurs. So when we're doing resistance training, basically we are providing a stimulus to the muscle. So what happens is, is that we have a resistance, we have weights in our hands. Our brain sends a signal through the central nervous system to the muscle for the muscles to contract. And in this central nervous system, there's the motor neuron, right? And it connects to the fibers on the muscle. And so the motor neuron and all the fibers it innervates is the motor unit. This is where, this is what we call muscle memory. Muscles certainly don't have memory, but when we recruit motor neurons, and we continue to recruit them through each workout, this creates a natural pattern for them to fire. So this is what occurs to help muscles contract in an effort to make them hypertrophy. So when that signal hits that, um, that motor unit or in that uh, muscle fiber, basically what occurs is what's called the sliding filament theory. And this is where inside the sacromere um, there are myosin and actin filaments which basically pull against each other. They slide against each other. And as you can see in the right part of the photo is that you can see how its top diagram is natural length. They pull against each other during a contraction and that is they get smaller and then the bottom figure is where they're getting longer or they're relaxing and so when these two things get together and they pull the muscles contracting and so this is when we think about muscles contracting muscles don't push they're pulling because when they contract they're pulling on the tendon of the muscle which allows the limb to move and so this is the sliding filament theory So muscle contracts through the sliding filament theory. And through continuous contraction, muscles hypertrophy, basically they increase the size of their, of their cells or the components of the muscle belly. Um, the myofibril, the smallest part of the belly, actually can only get to a certain height and it starts to split. This won't cause the increase in size. It's actually just the increase in size of the component cell. It actually will occur for many different reasons, but one of the primary principles is microtrauma. And this is where there's damage to the fibers because of the resistance training. And so the body tries to defend against it by uh, replacing the damaged tissue and adding more to it. Um, so uh, further damage is reduced. This is why we become sore. We have this delayed onset of muscle soreness and why it's best to do more exercise to these muscles so that it can help identify what's being done and eliminate soreness. So over the course of workouts we conduct what we call progressive overload and that's where we are continuing to put stress on the body or on the muscles um, during resistance training and this is the important principle behind hypertrophy. This is what causes um, hypertrophy to occur, it causes a microtrauma so on and so forth and basically what we're doing we're progressively over time increasing the number of sets reps weight how you're doing it um, so that the hypertrophy can occur so that we can put a little bit more stimuli onto the onto the muscles so that they continue to have to build and build and replace the damage uh, cells with 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 repaired um, cells um, for the muscle so that we continuously have this hypertrophy to occur. So to sum it up and to kind of put it fairly simply in a little story-like fashion, so we provide stress to the muscle. Basically, we're going to put weights in our hands 
and or on our bodies um, to try to lift. So we pr provide stress to the muscle. The message is sent through the central nervous system from our brain to activate the motor unit. This motor unit tells the actin and myosin to slide or pull against each other in order for the muscle to contract. When muscles contract, trauma occurs, we have damaged fibers, which is repaired, and more is added to it, so hypertrophy occurs. This causes an increase in the volume of the muscle cell, again, which is called hypertrophy. So that is what is occurring when resistance training. That is how muscles work. That is the basic foundations of strength training.